but I loves me some Fruit Loops. What's up everybody, Jared here from the Smoking Android once again. And today we're gonna to be taking a look at um, how to install MIUI with the Aroma Installer. And if you don't know what Aroma Installer is, um, it's actually an app that I was gonna be, or a, I don't even know if you can call it an app, really. It's a, it's a custom ROM installer. No, it's not a uh, recovery replacement. Um, and actually you need your recovery to get into it. But basically what it is, is something, from what I understand, is something that uh, developers will grab from this other developer and they sort of implement it into the installation process of the ROM. And instead of it just being, you know, your standard, um, you know, blue screen, if you will, if you have Clockwork Mod, you know what I'm talking about. Um, but what it does is it's kind of like a touch user interface and it's really well polished and it actually doesn't look like recovery at all. It looks like the inside of an application. Um, so basically what you, it lets you do is you can select, um, <clears throat> what radios you want. And this is all dependent on what the developer of the ROM itself wants to include, wants to give you options. So it's basically an, an options sort of installer. You know, you can choose anything from the boot animations to, you know, the browsers to the kernel, the radio, um, all kinds of really good stuff. I mean, they can really, you know, even the fonts, I mean, they, you can really customize, if you're a developer, you can really customize the installation process of a ROM. I thought that was really cool, and um, Stephen Deb and and the Photon e um, the Photon team um, have helped Stephen Deb kind of come up with a, a ROM installer. But just be aware that in the future, um, official MIUI or MIU MIU uh, MIU builds will not have the Aroma installer. Um, I don't know why. I think it's a great idea for a Aroma installer, but you know whatever. It's up to them, right? And I thought this would be a great opportunity to show you guys what it looks like. I haven't tested it out myself. I tried it out on the CyanogenMod Mod 9 latest release from Joker Sax, you know, the 5.0. And that was kind of an interesting experience. So I want to see what it does with um, MIUI. But um, this is a great opportunity because in my never-ending search for awesome applications to review for you guys, um, I downloaded an application called Motomizer. Now, there's a brother application to that from the same developer called... Um, what am I reading? Uh, uh, Andromizer, Andromizer, Andromizer. And um, it's basically like a tweak app. So you obviously need root. Um, Motomizer, on the other hand, is, I guess, developed specifically for Motorola phones. And I installed it and tried to do some of the tweaks. And it sent me for a boot loop, which was awesome. And I couldn't figure out how to get into it, out of it. Out uh, of it? How to get into it? And um, so I figured, ah, screw it. I'm just going to load up the new MIUI with a Roma installer and just kind of do it all on video to show everybody this is a perfect opportunity. So if you are on the Play Store and you want to go and download Motomizer, if you want to boot loop, be my guest. Um, so I will not be reviewing that application. Shame on you, certain person from Korea that developed it who has really, really poor English skills. And nobody understands how to use the uh, application. So, um, yeah, so let's go ahead and get started and check out what the latest MIUI looks like. I think it's 4.3.16. Oh, uh, geez, let's find out. So it's 2.4.13. Ha! With the Aroma Installer. But I don't think we're going to be seeing too many Aroma Installer builds in the future. So anyways, this will be a kind of a special little treat for all of us. So let's go ahead and take a look. Okay, so here we are at our device. Um, obviously, you're going to want to, well, I'll be posting a link in the description below to um, the XDA link, obviously, to download this like usual. Um, so basically, once you've downloaded it, just, you know, use your preferred method of pushing the file to your SD card, uh, external SD card to be exact. And then obviously, you're going to want to do the standard wiping. Make sure you wipe your um, Delvet cache and make sure you wipe your cache partition. Do a full wipe slash fade Theta factory data reset. Once you've done that, we go into installs it from SD card, choose it from SD card, and we're gonna go ahead and scroll down and look for it. I've got way too many folders on my SD card. This is getting ridiculous. Where the heck is it? There it is. So it'll look like two point or uh, version four, two point four point one three, uh, English DO zip aligned and all that good stuff. This is the one with the um, Aroma installer. So let's go ahead and take a look. This is the first for me, so uh, so hopefully everything goes well. Um, I actually mucked up the first time I tried to install um, 2.4.13 
and I had the same bugs that were in previous builds, and Steve's like, dude, just reflash it, man. Quit being a tard. So um, that's what I'm doing now. <laughs> All right, so this is a ROM installer. So basically, there's nothing much you have to do. I mean, it's literally attached to the zip file. And all you do is just go ahead and flash it like you would a regular ROM. Um, so obviously, these are the different languages that you can choose from without having to get into it. And um, obviously, the default language for a lot of these ROMs is English. So if you don't speak English, you know, then you can choose it from here while you're installing it. Um, so we click Next. As you can see, it's all touchscreen. Uh, terms and conditions, basically saying if you screw up your phone, it's not their fault, like usual, right? And let's focus a little bit there. And um, so you're about to install, yada, yada. It gives you the, um, the build number and all that good stuff. We'll click Next. And then, uh, what's this? Choose the installation type that best suits your needs. Default, light, and custom. I prefer custom because this is where you, know, you start getting into the good stuff. Um, we're going to go ahead and do a full wipe just in case and um, custom kernel default do not select okay so we're gonna go ahead and just leave it as default because um, Steven hasn't included any of the uh, other ROMs or sorry kernels except for the stock one so uh, the GPS configuration I'm in North America so I'll go ahead and select that and press the next button okay launcher so they're giving us a bunch of launchers to choose from MIUI home apex Nova launcher and trebuchet which is the stock CM9 launcher as well as some boot animations that we can choose from whether you want the uh, MIUI boot Mew, or the Galaxy Nexus or the uh, Cyanogen Mod 9 boot um, personally I think the MIUI boot is quite boring so I think what I'll do is stick with the Galaxy Nexus boot animation for now so please select the tweaks that you want in this installation so, uh, default, default build.prop setup, uh, CDMA, GSM, CDMA tweak, GSM tweak, sets the build.prop to default to GSM with extra tweaks. I'm going to go with this one, forced roaming. Uh, I don't know what that is, but let's try it out. All right, please select if you want alternate 2D libs. No, I want the newest sources. Give me the new stuff, damn it. And Adobe Flash Player, these are just some uh, stock applications that um, you can choose to not have included it, uh, upon the installation. So Adobe Flash Player, you're probably going to want that. Alternative File Manager, I like to keep that there just in case I want to do some tweaking without uh, Root Explorer. Genie Widget, I haven't seen that yet. Uh, Google Gallery, I'll want that. Weather App, I don't want the MIUI Weather App. Uh, browser, sure. Sound Recorder, meh. I never use it. Android Keyboard, sure. Live Wallpaper, meh. Who cares? Alright, so here we are, ready to install. Uh, the wizard is ready to begin installation. Press install now. Do, 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 do. And it's doing its thing, and that's what it looks like when it is installing. And it actually installs really quickly, as you can see. Uh, I successfully installed MIUI.us, press next to continue, and boop. Now, one thing that I probably should mention is that I believe this is going to be setting your internal SD card as the default storage. Um, so there, as like I've said in a lot of past videos on MIUI, um, you're going to want to probably, if you, if you want it to go to your external, there is a zip that you will flash on the XDA uh, link that I'll be posting below and it's called like external.zip or something like that external sd.zip and you'll just flash that once you're done flashing this ROM and um, it would have been nice to see that included in the um, aroma ROM install setup thing but uh, you know whatever so anyways we'll go ahead and reboot the device and that's that that is all it takes um, pretty simple pretty easy and uh, yeah that's it guys let's go ahead and check out the boot animation see if it's set Alright, so uh, we had some issues. Um, keep in mind that the Aroma installer for a lot of the uh, ROMs for the Atrix are still in highly experimental phase, even though the installer is supposed to work perfectly. Um, I ended up running into, yes, another boot loop. And then I tried to flash another kernel and still got another boot loop, so I actually had to fast boot wipe everything. And um, now here we are, using the zip that doesn't include the Aroma installer. So, um... I know that some of you, it does, the Aroma Installer does work, and for some of you, it may not work, but just keep in mind it is experimental, so don't base uh, those experiences on the actual ROM itself. It's really your choice on what you want to do, and so, you know, kind of flash that version at your own risk. But anyways, getting into um, the new version of MIUI, vir uh, build number 2.4.13, They've actually done a lot of uh, tweaks to this one, a lot of optimizations. 
Um, I'm not going to go through everything because I don't know if all of the new change logs have been applied to, let's say, for instance, the Motorola Atrix build as opposed to others. However, um, we do have things like a new optimized interface. Now, this is running the stock 1 gigahertz kernel, okay? Generally, in past builds, I would flash uh, Fox's uh, 1.3 gigahertz build just because I felt that the interface is a little bit slow. But as you can see, the 1 gigahertz is working just fine right now. Um, in the beginning, when I started reviewing this ROM, you know, whenever I um, swipe from screen to screen, <clears throat> excuse me, there would be a bit of a stutter, so it would kind of like hit, and then it would kind of like bounce a little bit, and it was really, really strange. Um, another thing that they've done is they've actually um, optimized the... Jeez, it keeps going out of focus, and it's starting to piss me off. There we go. Um, another thing they've done is optimize the contacts list. Um, they've done a whole bunch of stuff in the contacts um, application actually uh, to increase and optimize the speed of how they load, searching, and all a bunch of other stuff in there. Um, they've also optimized the status bar, notification um, bar, and the lock screen. Now what they've done, I'm not too sure what they've done with the status bar. Oh, oh I know one of the things that they've done is they've given us the option to, um, given us support to control the music right from the status bar. So if you were playing music, you'd pull this down, obviously it would show up in your notifications and you actually have the option to um, you know, pause and skip and all that good stuff. Um, as well as the lock screen is now apparently 30% more efficient. So if I just you know, wanted to run up to camera, apparently it opens that, you know, I guess 30% faster. I'm not really sure, you know, for some strange reason I never use the lock screen to get into my applications. Um, some things like bugs that I'm still noticing that apparently has been fixed in this version is the uh, lock screen torch. Apparently, when you press whoops, apparently when you press the uh, home button and hold it down, it shows the um, the torch there and lights it up, which I thought was a really, 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 really convenient feature on this ROM if it worked. And uh, you know, I've told Steve Deb in the past this, but um, he says that it's working now, and as you can see, it's still not working. Um, I was even told to double tap on it, and that would get it to work. And as you can see, Steve, if you're watching this, brother, it's still not working, man. Um, something else that was supposed to be fixed in this version was the, um, or from what I understand, is um, even though if you start out in portrait, you know, and then get into your browser and put her in landscape mode, um, it's, it's going to crash. And uh, I'm not going to sit here. There it goes. <clears throat> but apparently if you, from your desktop, go into portrait mode and launch the browser from uh, landscape mode, I'm sorry, then you should be okay. The problem is, as you can see, the desktop still doesn't want to go on portrait mode or landscape mode. It just doesn't work. But I'll show you something here. If we get into settings, okay, see, portrait, landscape, portrait, landscape, landscape. Landscape. Now let's try and get there, and as you can see, it just switches right back to uh, portrait mode. And yes, I do have rotation enabled. I've fiddled around with it, turned it on, turned it off. You know, I've gotten into um, settings and then displays, and uh, tried to fiddle around with the rotation there, but that it just doesn't work. Um, so sorry, Steve. That's something you're still gonna have to work on, brother. I can't even turn, you know, put the uh, desktop into ro into landscape mode in order to get into the browser so that it doesn't crash. So that's something that obviously needs to be worked on. Um, other changes, um, the new themes interface, really cool. So check this out. Before, I don't know if any of you have flashed the uh, previous builds of this ROM, uh, but it was a little more daunting, you know, of a task to start searching for themes and stuff like that. Now, still, the themes in a whole isn't working completely. Um, the only things that apply right now, I believe, is the lock screen, the icons, the wallpaper, and I think the bootloader as well. I think the bootloader works as well. You can download different bootloaders and stuff like that. But, you know, things like clocks and all that stuff, it's a real, real pain in the ass to get them to work and 99.9% .9 of the time it doesn't work. So it's still not completely implemented yet officially from MIUI. Um, so we're still kind of waiting on that one. But for now, it's still pretty cool. Um, before you would have to, you know, you would have local and online and you would select those. Um, but it was always a pain in the butt to get back to, you know, sort of the, the customization window for everything, you know, the, the alarm clock and the icons and all that stuff. So now as you can see right at the top here, we have mix. And all you got to do is just click on mix and everything you need is right there. Aside from a bunch of other optimizations, there's also been some camera optimizations. 
Um, I noticed in the past that when I was using the camera, you know, I'd take a picture, and this is during my testing stages, um, you know, I'd take a picture and then quickly try and hit the back button and nothing would happen. In fact, what ended up happening was um, eventually if I hit the, the home button enough times, it would um, force close on me and I wouldn't be able to use the camera at all until I rebooted. Um, so now, as you can see, it's still working. Unfortunately, we still don't have the camera, uh, sorry, the um, video camera working. But everybody's working on that, and if you're running Sandwich Mod or any ice cream sandwich based ROM for your Motorola Atrix, um, your camera isn't working, so don't bitch and complain, alright? <laughs> um, what else? What else? What else? Oh yeah, uh, as well, the apparently the um, Wi-Fi settings has been optimized, or your Wi-Fi connections. Um, I'm not really sure what they've done. I, you know, I suppose I could always learn how to develop ROMs and then dive into and see what they've changed around, but... Um, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> but anyway, so here's just some different options. I can't remember if these settings look any different or not, uh, but apparently it works better, so I'll take their word for it. Um, but that's basically it, guys. Um, you know, there's uh, another review in um, the XDA MIUI thread that uh, Stevens posted for me, so you can go check that out. That's a full review of all the settings and stuff like that. This is just something kind of small I wanted to go over and show you guys. Um, some of the new features, a couple of the different tweaks. There's a whole bunch of new actual optimizations and bug fixes and stuff like that in the change log. Um, I'll actually post a link in the description below if you're really interested to take a look at absolutely everything that's been done. Um, some of it may not be applied to the Motorola Atrix, some of them will. Um, I don't understand about 75% of the bug fixes because my I am not a Android Jedi like Steven Deb and the rest. <laughs> Be sure to give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this. And oh, by the way, if you happen to swing by the XDA MIUI thread, make sure you give Steven Deb a thanks. Um, shows a lot of appreciation. I'd really like the guy to have a recognized developer status on XDA. So anyways, guys, that is it. Thanks for watching. Until next time, the Smoking Android signing out. Ow!